All right, we got our girl Africa Von Black King loaded up so we can go get this first progesterone. And also, guys, man, whenever you guys are going to somebody's place for progesterones, make sure you guys are bringing your own muzzle. Luckily, my guy has one of my muzzles there, but I always bring this just for backup because I told him he can use it for bigger dogs. But well, let's get to it, y'all. guys i appreciate you guys tuning in also i want to give a shout out to every last one of you subscribers out there and potential new subscribers because i know i got a couple people who are watching um who haven't hit that subscribe button yet and if you haven't please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now but i want to give a shout out to all of you guys because we're officially at 7,000 subscribers and we gained more than half of you guys when we we're actually on our break but as you guys can see man we're back and we're dropping back-to-back -back consistent videos um, on a weekly basis. But like I said, guys, we're actually headed to get our first progesterone, but we got a surprise, guys, because I decided to go with a different stud. And this is actually gonna be a stud that is not in my yard, but I will give you guys one hint and one hint only. It is a stud that you guys have seen on our YouTube channel before. Um, but yeah, man, I decided to go with a different stud. And I did that because you guys already know Razor, Hulk, and Hannibal are gonna be, you know, the dogs that we're riding with at this very moment. My bad girl. She like, man, you got me tossed around back here. But yeah, so those three dogs are the dogs that we're gonna be running with. Those are our studs um, that are gonna be in the house. So I decided that it was best to actually breed her to something outside of my yard because I do plan on keeping the current studs that we have right now for a while. So I wanted to ensure that we're gonna have a group of heavy hitter designer gorillas to run these boys too for the future. So we decided to go outside the camp, y'all. Sometimes, you know, you gotta go outside the camp to bring something else new in to be able to hit with what you already got, you know? Um, you guys already seen, man, I got four heavy hitting studs right here, technically five, you know, because I got my boy Simba still, and we are gonna go outside the camp still to bring in something you know, a little different flavor, you know, to add to our, our designer gorilla sauce. But yeah, guys, I'm super excited about this breeding right here. Just like I said, we're gonna be able to bring something in and run it right to one of our boys. And on top of that, man, like I said, man, the stud that I decided to go with is nothing but pressure. So I'm almost positive that we're not gonna end up with nothing but super heavy hitting designer gorillas. You guys know how we're cooking them up here at Parker House Raw Wallace. But let's hurry up and get this PG done. Let's see where our girl is at. Come on, girl. And this right here, man, is one of those rare occasions where a breeder actually hits on every single breeding that he does. So how many litters you got right now, bro? How many you got? We currently have four litters. Four litters. Yes, sir. And name a time when this has ever happened again. If you were successful, everything hit, everything successful across the board. I mean, in how many years you been breeding, bro? I've been breeding about 10, 15 years. And when has this happened, bro? There, yeah. It's never happened. Yeah, never happened in every single Dog actually yeah, so this is an example right here. Like you said, 10 to 15, and this is the first time that it, everything actually hit. So that lets you guys know that it is hard, you know, being a breeder, and there's a lot of L's that you're gonna take in this. But what litter we got right here, bro? I'm gonna have you pop it open, man. We actually have uh, three pups off of my girl BB, bred to uh, Dizzy Caps Titan. Um, the bloodline is pretty much an avatar son bred to a beef daughter. Uh, we have two males and Let's three see. females. So, what's right here? This beautiful right pups, here? beautiful pups. This is a female we have here. Just kind of wipe them down so they're a little wet here. Got to keep them clean, you know. Yeah, they look good. Uh, but this is a female here, and then we also have two males. And before you guys ask, man, no. <laughs> None of these puppies are available. He's keeping everything. Everything, man. yes. This was uh, a long process. It took me about a year 
for this litter here. You know what I mean? You know, like you said, you know, there's some losses and, you know, sometimes things don't work out as planned and you just got to wait till it's your time. But yeah, these pups here, um, phenomenal, you know, got everything I wanted, full tails, full tails. nice, girthy, thick I like fur. the coat on it. Yeah. Like, what, what color yeah. is that? Lilac? Uh, this is lilac. Yes, it man. is. Yeah. So beautiful pups, man. Shout out to the Dizzy Camp. I appreciate y'all. You know, um, you. again, man, uh, definitely satisfied with these pups here. Man, they look good. All right. Let's let's go show them some big dogs that y'all got. Right. Man, he got the big dogs. My guy got some big dogs. So right, which one you want to start? We start right here, man. So what we got right here, man? We got the cane corsos. Yep, the cane corso uh, puppies. We have seven here. This is off of my girl Duchess, bred to uh, one of my boys, my good friends. Uh, John Jackson, um, his boy William. So you got uh, an Argentina imported male, uh, bred to my female, uh, her mother's from Spain, and uh, we got some Scandifio blood in here. So oh, yeah, she beautiful. Beautiful pups, this is one of our females here. These will have some available. So, yep. You know, uh, we'll yeah. give you some info if you guys are interested. Again, we got seven pups here. Another phenomenal litter here. Yeah, there you got uh, another one, another yes, heavyweight sir. banger. So, yes, we have another 10 pups here of the Connie Corsos. As you can see, there's a variety of colors. Excuse the flies. Right? Yeah, man. You it's know, good. And you got, there. when you got puppies and you right. walk in and you got poop rotating, man, yeah. you're going to have flies. There's yes, no way to sir. get around it. Yep. So, as you can see, we got a beautiful blue male here. Um, again, this is off my boy Duke. And if Same you guys want to see Duke, Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram. What's your Instagram, bro? Uh, my, my Instagram is the Bully Code Trey. And again, that's the Bully Code. You spell my name T R E Y. Yep. And uh, you'll see my logo on there. Heck yeah. And if you guys want puppies, anything like that, go check him out. But what was you saying, bro? Uh, yeah, these are off my boy Duke. And again, um, Duchess and Duke are actually litter mates. So back to Scandifio, his mother's from Spain. Uh, and we bred him to uh, a little bit some older lines, it's like Rough House and Alcor blood. So uh, yeah, as you can see, these are a little more tight skinned. They're not as big as the other ones, but again, they still have some growing to do. They're yeah. only about two weeks old, so yeah, they look good. In a couple weeks, you'll see these will be a lot bigger. But yeah, yeah these, are, these are puffs. We have ten here. All of these will be available. So. Hey, there man. you go. Hey, man, he got a Rottweiler in there, too, man. Right, there we Rottweiler go. Out, we have this beautiful tribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. beautiful markings here. Got to get his collar up. Collar right, so there good. we go. But, yeah, so as you can see, we have he has the beautiful tribe markings here. Um, so, kind of course, those do come in tribes, so as you can see. But, yeah, beautiful coat. Beautiful yeah, he got coat. it. Very rare. Man, so this is oh, let, me, let me let me turn around. Let me get some better lighting to show that cover, man. There you go. You can see this is a beautiful male here. He has the tan points on him, black thick fur as well. Like I say, these aren't as old as the other ones. Uh, they are a little younger, so you'll see in a couple of weeks they will be pretty big as well. Heck yeah, eyes are still closed. Yep, eyes still closed. Yep, ready for his meal. Heck yep. yeah. Thanks oh man. Yeah. But yeah, I want to say a huge congratulations, bro. Like I said, man, it's. Super, super rare that, you know, um, breeders are actually showing support to other breeders. That's one thing I want to talk about. Um, and it's rare, you know, to be able to have this type of success, bro. My People on my channel know we went a whole year without having a litter, bro. And you know I've been running. The, I mean, he knows. He do my PGs, man. So we've been running, you know, time and time again. And sometimes you, you take a loss. Even on in-house, you know, studs, you know, you, you take a loss. It don't matter how I go. You can't win them all, bro. Just like you said, you don't win them all. Yeah. just got to... Uh, Continue with the game plan and, and, and have faith, and you know the next, you know, wait for the next chapter. Exactly. Heck yeah, man! But let's get to this. Uh, get to this PG, man. Just wanted to show you, showcase the pups, man. Yeah, thanks again. Since we're here, man, I might as well have my boy Trey, you know, kind of give you guys the whole spill on progesterone and what we got going on. So what we got going right here, what's this right here? Bro? All right, so we have the Fine Care Plus, um, also known as the Wondolfo uh, progesterone machine. Uh, Wondolfo, I'm sorry. Uh, pretty much what this does here is uh, it, it tests your female and it gives us a certain level to let you know when they're fertile. 
Um, we can also do uh, what we call a reverse progesterone test and we can also tell when the female is going into labor and it's mm -hmm. safe to do a C-section or whatever the case is, uh, if needed. Yeah. So um, but, but today we're, what we're doing is we're actually going to be doing a PG test, progesterone test, and uh, we are going to be testing this female. Yep. Her name is Alpha, is Alpha, Alpha Bomb Black King. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so we've already uh, drew the blood. Um, we spin it down. So, we have our sample. As you can see, uh, the, uh, the centrifuge pretty much splits the, the plasma in the blood, it separates it. And we're going to test the clear part. So, that's going to be our tester right there. That's yes, how this, this uh, machine works here. Pretty accurate. Um, and as you guys saw with all the litters that I have here, this, this machine is amazing. Yeah, but it's hidden. Yeah, it's hidden. It's definitely hidden. Yeah, it's our time, for sure. Exactly. For sure. And I know the question that everybody is wondering, so with your experience with using this machine, what do you find to be the best numbers for doing naturals, AIs, and obviously TCIs? And I know with the bullies, you guys do do surgicals. Correct. So um, in my experience, I normally just pretty much follow the machine for the most part. Mm -hmm. However, um, one part that I do take in consideration as far as, I'll start off with the surgicals, mm -hmm. um, just for myself, because I do a lot of surgicals. Surgicals, I go higher in numbers. Mm -hmm. So um, how it works here is um, from a, we're looking right now, so in the beginning stages, it usually goes from uh, ovulation is from six to 10. Yep. 10 to 15, the eggs are maturing, mm -hmm. and then above the 15, all the way to a 40 is the fertile stage, yep. right? So uh, let's just say she was uh, anywhere between a six and a 10 here today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna call it an eight. Yep. If she's an eight today, um, I, would, I would pretty much do another progesterone mm -hmm. test in three to four days just to make sure that she reaches the 15, yep. the, the minimum of, of uh, the maturity, I'm yep. sorry, the fertile, the fertile stage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so TCIs and uh, natural breeders. For me, um, I really see no difference in TCIs and, and AIs simply because uh, TCI has the count. Yep. Um, same, uh, you're doing everything the same, the only difference is you can actually see the semen going in with the TCI. Yeah. So uh, the levels of that, I, I kind of say it's about the same. Some people may say you wait a little later. Yep, I'm about um, to say however, that's what I heard so, too. Right, so uh, for a natural, anything above a 15. Yep. You can get a 15, you can do a natural. Um, if you're doing a natural type, the females should be receptive and yep. obviously nature's gonna take Heck its yeah. flag and everything exactly. like that. Yep. Um, so at that point, if you're gonna do a TCI, I believe it really comes down to where you have your stud. If you have a stud here at home um, and you're not doing anything shit, yep. then uh, obviously it really doesn't matter. I'll yeah. still say start at a 15 yep. you know, and up. Mm -hmm. uh, surgicals, surgicals. For myself, I try to do a surgical with anything above a 20. Mm -hmm. That's what I recommend anyone coming over. For myself, I go in the 30s. Yep. Some may disagree because it's high, but again, um, the ultimate thing with this progesterone test here, our machine is finding out when ovulation occurred. Yep. So with knowing when ovulation occurred, um, that 30, as long as I know it's within the, the range, uh, which is the three to four days or what have you after ovulation, then I know we're safe. Yep. Right? So it's, it's nothing changes the actual science of, of how the progesterone and ovulation works. Okay? Yeah, and some people might think it's crazy too when you say that number. Right. Yeah. A lot of people, mm -hmm. obviously with us, when we, with the big dogs, Most we certainly. typically don't do surgicals. Right. Um, and usually people, the vets are like, you know, man, you need to be at an 18. Right. And anything right. over, you know, that is gonna be ridiculous. Okay. And that's why I always say, you know, when you get semen shit for me, you know, if your vet says, hey, yep. they're looking for 18, even if they're out of 20, right. we're still gonna ship that semen okay. because you still have a super high chance yep. of your female, you know, taking. Because everybody's gonna have their own, you know, range on what they should breed, yeah. just like him. You know, you right. said a 30, 30, I've never heard of it, but you know, right. going 30 high, you know, but fact, again, it's something I think, different. I'll uh, give you another uh, scenario. So uh, with one of the litters that I have here, um, follow the same steps. I got the early ovulation numbers, you know, six to 10 or what have you. Same thing, I follow the same thing every time. Uh, three to four days after ovulation, I always run the numbers, and if they're up, we breathe, right? So one of my corsos, um, I got the six to 10, ran the numbers, okay? Came back three to four days. On that fourth day, she was a 42. Woo. I did one AI, and we got 10 puppies. Hey. So it goes back to, I felt safe because I knew that 
she had ovulated just three to four days prior. So again, the numbers really don't mean anything when you know the day that they ovulated. Yep. So uh, again, that's just my personal, uh, you know, perception of that. Yeah. But again, as you can see, we we hit with every single litter. Yep. But that's that's just what I yeah. What I and one thing you you guys heard him say is that he did multiple progesterones. Oh, that's one thing that I did want to talk about today. Um, we're doing these multiple progesterones because a lot of my clients that uh, you know want to do. The breeders with my studs, obviously, you got to do the PG test, exactly. um, you know, to pretty much guarantee that you'll get a repeat on the breeding right. just because we're shipping. Right. But a lot of people, they don't want to do multiple PGs. They'll no. do one PG and say, hey, you no, know, we're going to trust we gonna trust my male right. that's never bred before to right. let me know when a female's ready. You got to know for sure. You got to know, know for sure. sure. Do multiple t PGs. You know, I know a lot of people want to get in it and spend the least amount of money they can and try to win big. But when you're doing it the right way, you, you got to invest, man. No, no room to cut corners, yep. you know, and you just always want to play it safe. Yep. You know, we, we spend a lot of money on the dogs. Um, you're, you're expecting puppies or what have mm -hmm. you. And also, you know, look at the time and effort that you put in. Yeah. You're just waiting for this moment. Yeah, Why? six months. Exactly, right. So, you know, you know, the last thing you want to do is cut corners yep. and, and miss a breeding yep. because you didn't want to do a progesterone. Exactly. Now you're back at it and you got to wait another six months yep. until the next time. So. No cutting corners. Exactly. Don't cut no corners. And even there's times when you don't cut corners and you aren't successful, you know, like myself. Didn't cut no corners, still spent the same amount of money as if I was going to be bringing puppies in. And I took an L. But you, it's a part of the game. Take those L's and you ride with it. But let's get this thing going. So what we got right here, man? All right. So um, we've already spun the blood down. Um, pretty much I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it separates the yeah. plasma from the blood. I've already collected the sample with my tool here and I mix it into our buffer. Yep. Um, our buffer is what we're gonna place onto the test strip, which we're gonna insert into the machine and it will give us our number. Okay. Yes, sir. So I'll go ahead and spin, uh, you know, mix the uh, buffer in the serum and then I'll go ahead and place it onto my test strip and it takes about 15 minutes and we'll have the result. You see, we'll go ahead and insert the sample into the testing area here. You can always tell it's a brand new test by the little blue strip in there. Yep. Don't get played, y'all. Yep. Don't, Don't get played. Play. There you go. So we'll go ahead and insert it there. We'll set it. Make sure that it's calibrated. Want to make sure we're doing a dog, not a cow or a cat or anything like that. We want to choose serum and plasma. And I'll always do it just one last time to make sure it's reading. And we start. Sweet. Let's see what we're going to get y'all. I know some of you guys are going to be wondering, man, where is the fourth litter? Well, here it is. And what are these right here, bro? Uh, these are Frenchies. French Bulldog Puppies. And who, who is this off of right here? Uh, this is off my boy Prince. Uh, we bred to him. We bred to him. Uh, yep, yes, sir. He is a Shaq grandson. Um, where Shaq is at CEC Bullies in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, and we bred him to a direct Valor daughter. Um, and Valor's obviously with West Coast Guiding Line. Yeah. Uh, so the combination here, um, as you can see, made some beautiful, tiny little bitties. Frenchies. Here. I think it's tiny. So, yep. So we have two. <laughs> as you can see, we got two females here. Heck yeah, tiny. Yep. Yeah. And I know some of you guys don't know, but this is who I grabbed my boy Nipsey from. Exactly. Nipsey the Frenchie, and these puppies are actually off of Nipsey's sister too, yep. so. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So as you guys can see, yeah, this is the fourth litter. Got Heck two yeah. teeny tiny French. Frenchies, yeah. Insane. And both are All right, so we should be done. Let's see what we looking at. Ooh! She had 11.9. She had 11 .9. On time. On time. Sheesh, hey. She is ovulating. She is ovulating. We're actually gonna go with my guys recommendation and we're going to wait for the 15 so hopefully um this thing works out guys we can actually go out and do a live reading with this beautiful stud but until then we're out